and welcome to another episode of the Miles Offside Podcast, where we talk a little bit of football and a whole lot of nothing. My name is Oscar Puente, also known as Footy From Afar, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, super producer Ian Stimson and Chuck Bailey. Don't like it when you turn it round, it freaks from my head. Am I the super producer now? Oh, good. Enjoy the edit, mate. Enjoy oh, the edit. Piss. <laughs> and that's the end of this week's podcast. Thank you very much. Take care. <laughs> tight, tight, guys. Well done. Well, yeah. I just wanted to highlight Ian because my actual audio recording was unusable last week, so we had to use the backup, and I'm sure that was a bunch of extra work for him. So, and I contribute literally nothing to this whole enterprise. So, <laughs> and to be honest, with the way that football and the January transfer window has gone, I'm I'm not really going to contribute anything football wise uh, ever again, ever more, forever. <laughs> done with it. Uh, the football has finally finished. Um, congratulations! Yeah, done. Checked out till the Euros, yeah. I'm not even interested in that now. No. Not back in for that. Nah, <laughs> no. Definitely don't get it up for that because that will not not end well. No. no. It's going to be real bad for England. We'll get to that, I'm sure, actually. <laughs> maybe in the second half of the podcast, given uh, given some of the questions that came in, we'll see. Um, but we are the Miles Offside Podcast. We do nominally talk about football, um, but mostly just go off track a lot. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, we do appreciate it. Thank you. We're happy to have you. If you are returning, we very, very much appreciate it if you're returning. <laughs> yep. And this week, we're actually going to change it up a little bit. No football. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much. We're going to um, talk about tits and wine. Wow. Okay. Don't know why that's what came to my head. Well, because I'm drinking wine and don't worry about it. And end. you... Uh, <laughs> You're looking very uh, bosomy today, Ian. Hey, that diet is working, <laughs> all right? That di- I don't care what anyone says, it is working. You're looking good. Thanks, mate. Can we get a weight update? How are we, how we doing? Static. Static. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's, you're not creating a surplus. That's what matters. Exactly. Tune in next week for Ian's weight update. Oh, God, don't make that a thing. <laughs> God, don't make that a thing. We're going to put pressure on you now, you said. like You did uh... say 24 stone. Yeah, twenty four. No, no. I believe. I believe twenty four stone was what was mentioned. I yes, I don't weigh twenty four stone. <laughs> Not, you won't. You won't. Yeah, that's you won't. right. You have no. that positive mentality, Ian. You don't weigh twenty four stone. <laughs> you're strong. You're stubborn. You can do this. <laughs> I forgot I told you guys that, and then I was like, "Holy shit! How is Chuck saying my marathon <laughs> mantra? Is he in my head? What, whatever you do, don't get fucking pneumonia." <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, you might be losing weight, but you're keeping it in all the right places, and we do appreciate it. Mm. These are pecs. <laughs> these are pecs. I'm fully, fully behind the fact that these are pecs. All right, shall we get to the actual podcast, gentlemen? Or... Yeah. <laughs> I told you, this is it this week. This is, yeah. I got to keep Chuck on a short leash. I am in full derailment mode, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're not going to do rapid, rapid, rapid fire news, because instead... <laughs> Very good. It was the end of the winter January transfer window, and there was some things that happened. Didn't even know it begun. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up very quickly, and then before that, before we get into the football, I guess, maybe, for this week. So let's just take this team by team. We're going to start off with oh, the sucks. worst team in North London, and that is Arsenal. Uh, on the in list, they have... Pablo Mari from Flamingo and Cedric from Southampton. <laughs> couldn't even get through that without laughing. No, I really couldn't. Uh, on the out list, there's a bunch of kids on loan that I've never heard of. So, Cedric, big signing for Arsenal. Going to save their season, turn it around. Arr, desperate quest to create one defender. <laughs> no, it's hypothesized that Cedric's agent is like this super agent that has some incredible players that they've never really dealt with before, but they kind of want to get access to him. So apparently this might be a potential sweetener to kind of get him a bit more money. But I think it's only on loan. I'm not sure, which makes me think that that's all fucking bullshit. And Arsenal would, Arsenal fans are just desperately clinging on to some sort of positive there. Saying a lot when Southampton are happy to be rid of him. That's, yes. That's... <laughs> and Arsenal are happy to have him in too. Did we expect Arsenal to do a lot in this window? I mean, I think I do probably we expect, expect Arsenal to do a lot. Do a lot generally, yeah, fine. <laughs> but I don't think I expected very much from them in this window. I think maybe next window you'd expect some uh, confidence to be put in Arteta. But I mean, I thought this would be they've they've given up on this season, surely, haven't they? So I thought maybe yeah. this would just work out like this. 
Everyone's given up on this fucking season. Well, you're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah, they're less than 1% to make Champions League and they're 1% to get relegated. So they are just very much going to do nothing. Um, The only reason they would maybe want to do a January signing is to like get someone in and get that relationship building with Arteta before a full summer like they would. But if they didn't identify anyone on the market genuinely, then it makes sense that they wouldn't. It Like we can troll about Cedric, but yeah, fair enough, I guess. Arsenal's not doing anything this year anyway. Um, which means we can move on to the next team on the list, Aston Villa. On the in list, they have Danny Drinkwater. Yay, thank you for taking him. Uh, <laughs> and here's a name you haven't heard in a while, Pepe Reina, the goalkeeper. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That guy. We yeah. knew that. He is older than our own beloved Ian super Stimson. producer. Yeah, <laughs> he genuinely is. One of the few professional players. What do we think? I could so I could still do a job. I could still do a job on the Aston Villa bench. That's good. That's good. So Egypt first, Aston Villa bench second. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's much in the way of the signings here. Villa, who are in a relegation battle um, at 44% right now to go down, which is not obviously great. Um, so you would have thought that maybe they'd want to do more than sign Danny fucking Drinkwater, but I don't know. Um, shall we move on then to Bournemouth? Bournemouth. We've started winning games, pricks. I know. Really annoying. <laughs> Not happy about that, yeah. Uh, and even worse than that, they have no one on the way in, but they did send someone out, and now I'm really mad that Chelsea didn't snap him up. It is the one and only Asmir Begovic. Oh, really? Going on loan to AC Milan. What? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> did not know that. Good for him. A little, you know, a little, uh, holiday. Better than going to the LA Galaxy, if you ask Chicharito. True story. That's the beginning of retirement, I've heard. Yep. The European dream is close to dying. <laughs> I know. Meanwhile, for Asimir Begovic, the European dream is just getting started, baby. He's like, spring break! Woo! Yeah. We'll go from one struggling team that plays in red and black to another struggling team that plays in red and black. Woo! <laughs> Burnley, not much going on there. Literally not one name I recognize on the in or out list. Someone named Brownhill from Bristol, so... I don't know. I feel like there's a poop joke in there somewhere. Brown Hill. Okay, right, fair <laughs> You're enough. teeing it up. Yeah. You guys are the ones with the jokes. <laughs> Thanks, I'm mate. not sure that's the case, but yeah. <laughs> I just love that. It's so tangential. You know, brown. That's, that's funny. <laughs> poop is funny. <laughs> I'm doing what I can. Doing what I can. Uh, speaking of doing what they can, or in this case, not at fucking all, <laughs> is Chelsea Football Club. Let me read you the outs <laughs> list first. We got Danny Drinkwater going to Villa, Mark Wehi, Connor Gallagher, Jamal Blackman, Victor Moses, George McEachran, Charlie Brown. That's actually someone's name. And there's a poop joke in there as well. That's true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tariq Lamptey and Jacob Maddox all going out, most of them on loan. Here is the in list for Chelsea Football Club. Hold on. <sighs> no one. Literally fucking no one. Remember when we won <laughs> the appeal? Everybody was in a great mood. We got the appeal, came through successful. We're going to sign people in January. going to be a great window. It's not like we were allowed to sign people in the summer. And literally fucking no one. I think it was more out of principle than anything else, to be honest. It's yeah. not necessarily... Yeah, because none of the big teams really do much action in January anyway, like to, to strengthen because everything is so overpriced, etc. But So I just think it was more of a principle that... It was kind of a fuck you. And the fact that they did get it overturned shows it was a harsh punishment anyway. And your kind yeah. of reaction before, Oscar, when you compared all the teams that have done similar stuff, the fact that it's been rescinded, what, you were meant to have four a four-window transfer ban, weren't you? Was it originally four windows? I thought it was just the two windows. Oh, I thought it was two seasons. That's why. I don't know. Whatever it is, you've got it reduced. So, yeah, it doesn't mean you have to do anything. And it just builds up more for the summer... Yeah, I mean, Frank is clearly displeased. I don't know if you guys saw his comments in the press conference. Um, I've never seen him sort of, I don't want to say lash out, but very clearly be at odds with the team, with the board uh, like that before. So that wasn't great. Um, on top of like, we're still lacking anyone like a left back or a goalkeeper. And it seemed like they most of the rumors were that they were going after a striker, which is like... Mm, Dries Mertens or Edinson Cavani or... Right. He is just... Anti, I mean, like this week, he subbed off Tammy Abraham to put Willian on as like a false nine. It's like, bitch, like Batshuayi sat right there. Yeah, and Batshuayi's face was not good. Oh, he was pissed. Yeah, I'm not surprised. 
And we're playing, you know, we took our willy out, or rather put our willy in, <laughs> one or the other. Willy Cowboy started playing. Yeah. And uh, you saw how well that went. No, I don't think it was that bad. Like, he made a mistake. Yeah, sure, he shouldn't have run off. I mean, it was better off. than Kepa. He shouldn't have run off like a dog chasing a car. But <laughs> going after the ball, <laughs> that made no sense um, to then allow... No, Willy, Willy. Willy, Willy, come. Willy, back here. Right now. <laughs> yeah, Willy. Ah, yeah. oh, you fucker. <laughs> oh, he's got this. It's, it's too late. He's been hit by a car. <laughs> that That's about what it feels like right now, actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I I'm very angry. That we didn't sign anyone. Uh, speaking of very angry, let's go on to the next team, I guess. Everton. Everton. Yeah. Why would Everton make you angry? <laughs> hey, at least you have two names on the end list. We have Crystal Palace signing Cenk Tosin and Scott Banks. Yeah. Did you notice that Scott Banks is also on the out list? <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. What? We signed a guy from Hamilton Academical uh, in Scotland and then loaned him out to Aloha. So he was playing in the Scottish <laughs> Premier League. He's now on loan in the Scottish First Division or Scottish Championship, whatever it's called. Uh, and then we got Jenk Tosin on loan and he's injured. I hope Scott Banks hadn't moved down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be a bit awkward, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're going straight back up. Um, yeah, fuck this team. Fuck all of it. Fuck the owners. Uh, the terrible management. The awful everything. Sick of it. Done. Bye. So A plus for the January window? <laughs> Can't even get a grade. You. <laughs> or what? What is it when you're absent? X incomplete. I for incomplete. Uh, over oh, here. So we don't. We don't have I. I'm sure it was you. Definitely you for ungraded. Ungraded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ungraded. Oh, that's so much worse. <laughs> it means you turned up, but you may as well have not bothered. You should have just stayed in bed. That's so offensive. Honestly. What? I, this is so shit, I refuse to grade it. Is the translation of that? Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not taking the five minutes to grade this piece of trash. It is ungraded. <laughs> yeah. What's amazing as well is a lot of the exams are done by computers. So it's even more impressive. <laughs> it's just like the computer goes, Arr! see you later. Nope. <laughs> nope. I refuse. I refuse. In it. So Everton. Everton in. We have. Hold on. I can't. I don't know if I can pronounce this. J- J- Jared. Branthwaite? Branthwaite. Brathwaite. I don't know. Braithwaite. Braithwaite? No. No, that doesn't look Wait, right. Wait, it's got an N? That, that, no, yeah, Branth... I don't, I don't know. You take over. I can't handle these fucking names. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and out. They've got a load of people. Um, Cenk Tosin? Really interested. Cenk, yeah, Cenk Tosin. Yep, yep. Do we need to mention again that he's injured or... <laughs> hey, at least you guys signed a striker, right? Like, that was what you needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a striker in on loan. He's injured. And then we loaned out one of our other strikers. Brilliant. Oh, and then we sold the other promising one to Bristol Rovers. Brilliant. <laughs> well fucking done. And then we were trying to sign an injured player all day. Brilliant. <laughs> Pricks. Leicester City. Leicester City. Uh, they got Ryan Bennett in on loan from uh, Wolves. He was quite big for them last year. I remember having him in my FPL team for ages. Yeah. Yep. Decent. Oh, fucking Leicester, man. They're just good at this, aren't they? They might be. Yeah. I, I mean, they <laughs> also loaned out a player called Admiral Muskvay. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Where's he been? Oh, my God. That's I want... amazing. Out at sea. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's gone to Swindon. Is Swindon on the coast? Ian? Mm, don't think so. Oh, okay. I thought you knew. Wow, like, there's, uh, you guys don't even know where something is? I don't know England. Yeah, there's a load of bullshit towns. There's so many fucking towns. Swindon's definitely a, one of them. Um, let's see. If you're from Swindon, uh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, do I say something nice? Do I just go, lean into the joke? Fuck off. No, I just think, where are you? Where on what are you? Southwest England. It's not, yeah, not, not coastal. No. Oh. Oh, do they okay. have the internet there? Are we likely to have a listener from Swindon? They probably got the internet there. I mean, you guys barely have the internet where you are, given the internet speeds. It's like on dial-up, basically. No, I'm on I'm on a hundred meg. Yeah, Chuck's all right. I'm the I'm the weakest one. I'm on about thirty meg. Because you live in a small ass town. Yeah, well, all right. We believe yeah. electricity to be witchcraft and asbestos to be <laughs> what you make bridges the out future. of. <laughs> exactly. The future. And apparently the production won't be banned yeah. until 2050. We're going to shut down asbestos 2079. 2070. Anyway, Liverpool. <laughs> they signed someone named Joe Hardy. Is he going to do a tables, ladders and chairs match? Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is, he is part of the tag team um, with Tom Hardy, the actor. Interesting. Yeah, they'll do that. Um, and they also signed Takumi Minamino, 
Oh, you didn't even have to take a run up at that. That was some, that was beautiful. Uh, pronunciation is kind of my kind of my game. That's about all I've got. Um, from RB Salzburg, make it very clear that there is no link there to RB Leipzig. They are two completely different teams. They're not. Um, <laughs> for undisclosed, but I'm pretty sure they signed him for about eight million. Uh, very good signing. Yeah. Kind of Salzburg is where uh, Erling Haaland uh, came from as well, yeah. who has now scored a goal every ten minutes. Your new man crush. Uh, Oh, yeah. Seven goals, seven goals in three games. Thank you very much, <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's nineteen. Yeah, so Liverpool just doing that kind of having a bit more of a creative player again to strengthen and give a bit of variety, which is good. I still wonder, like they're running away with this league so much that I mean, twenty-two points now. <laughs> yeah, Man City have twatted themselves in their face. No, um, not good. Ah, <laughs> uh, is everyone going to stay there? Because they don't seem committed to dominating because they're out, like, they played all the kids because of the Club World Cup in the League Cup, which meant that Villa beat them. The FA Cup, the the replay is where Klopp's kicked off and said they're not playing any of the main team and he's not going to manage it. So they're not going to go for that either. So it's kind of hollowing out the victory almost of their sheer domination. That Like, if they were doing this across multiple competitions, then... It'll be even more impressive. There is rumours that um, Juventus are in for Van Dijk. 150 million, I heard. 150 million, yeah. Yeah. I've seen that in more than a couple of places. But they can afford to turn it down. There's no reason they would say yes to that. They can, no yeah. No reason. Unless Virgil's agitating for the move, you know? Cause... Yeah, if he's done. Because it, there was something mentioned that where he's been in the UK for a long time. Because he was at Celtic for a few years. Then he was at Southampton for at least two seasons I feel and then he's been in Liverpool so you never know he might want to might want to change that's that's the kind of stuff that plays on people's minds you know especially if you have achieved everything with a club potentially yeah but a hun- like the league title is worth 150 million to them easily oh no I understand that Liverpool will want to you know keep mm. keep the player but if the if the player is agitating for the move you know what it's like what can you do I mean they, people keep those players all the time. We kept Callum Hudson Odoi. He was agitating to go to Bayern. Yeah, but it does. But it's it's different when it's a young player. And also, you played you hit the the way you kept Callum Hudson Odoi was put in a player who had never basically played for you at all on a hundred k a week. That's that's the fact. That if if that's how you keep a player, like it's a bit. Uh, are you actually keeping them because they want to be there, or is it just you paid them off? You know, it's that's a different thing. But players like that, especially in his position. Like, he'll have been paid a load of money to go there, so it's not exactly like you're going to double his wages. Callum hudson O'Doy probably went from, like, 10, maybe even less than 10k a week to 100k a week. Like, that's huge. That's true. I don't necessarily think that's a fair comparison. Modric then at Tottenham, right, when he was, he, like, didn't do two weeks of a preseason because he was going to come to Chelsea for 40 million in summer of 2011. Very much the Ericsson situation. Yeah, exactly. And Ericsson stuck around for half a year. To no avail, but like... Because no one would actually buy him. It's Real Madrid or nothing. Oh, nothing. <laughs> oh. Oh. Like the extra thing. Oh, they went for the nothing option that time, did they? Yeah. yeah. yeah they did. Now now I'm with Antonio Conte and the Premier League B team. Yeah, I'm not saying it's beyond Liverpool to keep him. Keep him if it's even true. You know, it could be fucking mm. bullshit, but... You know, it's just an interesting thing that that's, that's the first little little chink in the armour we've heard of any rumours of people maybe thinking about going. So, you know, why not report it? Yeah, and Madrid's going to come calling soon too for like Salah, Mane, Firmino. All the big teams will come for those players. Yeah. That's just a fact. And like, I don't think Liverpool can keep them for forever. They'll wait till they're like 28, 29 and then sell them to Madrid because like Madrid doesn't care about paying, overpaying. For people in their prime who are going to run a contract out to when they're old. Like, look, with Bale, right? They they knew that they were signing Bale till he was, like, 58. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, that's fine. We'll pay for that. And so they'll just do the same thing for those guys? All right, let's 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 keep going then. Uh, to the other best team uh, is Manchester City. Mm, no one in. I'm not so sure if you can say that anymore. Yeah, I mean, fine. A team <laughs> from Manchester <laughs> that plays in blue. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even make any desperation signings to try and claw it back. It's just kind of content with what they've got. Is Pep just 
done in summer he's gone and so it'll be new person new transfers i think that depends on the champions league no i think even still i think i, I think he'll want to win the champions league but like we said before if they don't win the champions league then he'll kind of just be moved on not that i know who would be available oh i think he sticks it out until he walks away on a high note i don't think he walks away on a low note he doesn't have that in him no but i don't think it's he walks away i think they fuck him off but either way there's going to be I don't know, six or seven players going in oh, the summer yeah. transfer window. They're at the end of a player cycle too, for sure. Well, David, yeah, David Silva's going. Yeah, for Aguero's sure. not that far behind. Yeah, he's not got long. That's why Jesus is coming through. Uh, they'll probably lose Sane. De Bruyne's too. De Bruyne is going to be one of those goals to meet Real Madrid or Barca someday. Someday, but. That he'll get one more, he'll get an improved contract surely before then. Yeah, or maybe he wants to get there sooner and play with Hazard because they're Belgian buddies. Belgian, Belgian bun buddies. <laughs> not, not what I said. Right, let's go to the other side of Manchester because this is hilarious. <laughs> what? You don't like Nathan Bishop? Nathan Bishop, yeah, they signed a guy from South End. Fair enough. Um, finally got Bruno Fernandes. That's a good signing for the record. That's a very yeah, good signing is, for yeah. them. It yeah, is. yeah, he's a class player, Odion Igalo. <laughs> Not as much of a good signing for them. He has been signed from Shanghai Shen- Shenhua. Three, he gets paid three hundred thousand a week. Now, it's been said that Man United are only paying a hundred thousand of that, but even still, that's mad. good for him. He's doing it right. I'm not going to hate. That is... But I, I saw something recently that it's uh, all the African players in the world and uh, he's the second highest paid. <laughs> and, but then you've got Aubameyang is on like 198k a week, which you think that is just classic Arsenal. <laughs> like try and get a discount somewhere. Don't round it up. Yeah. Don't round it up to 200. <laughs> no, 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 no. Save that extra. Um, yeah. And then you've got Sadio Mane on 150. So Odi and Agalo is apparently, to some guy in China, worth two Sadio Manes. I mean, that's that's not quite how wage structures work, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still. <laughs> Literally twice as much. They, can't, like, they would give Mane 500000 a week, but he just isn't willing to go. And Odi Nagala wouldn't go for less. Like It's not like... These wages don't exist in absolute. It's exactly the same logic I've used in some pay negotiations before. Is that guy twice as good as me? Uh, oh, he is. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. It's never, it's never worked out to your advantage. No. no, I've always walked out on the same money, but fine. At least I no, know why. Exactly. I mean, Rashford, so like, let's try to be genuine about analyzing this instead of just joke, joke, jokes like we always do. Ah, <sighs> fine. Rashford's out till the end of the season, basically, right? Or for a long time. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to put on my stats nerd voice now, by the okay, way. Okay, yeah, good, I'm good. Serious. Yeah. yeah. Um, this gives them an option of someone who's played in the Premier League, who's reasonably capable, but not so big that he's going to be pushing f- or like he knows his place, right? He knows who he is. He's not going to come in and be like, why am I not starting every game? He's on loan. They don't have to go and overpay for some guy like the way we did for fucking Kepa on like, like if we had brought in a keeper on loan for a season or half a season instead of paying out the asshole for someone who's not good enough to be playing for Chelsea, that's the same thing that United would have been doing, is overpaying for a shitty striker. Whereas a loan for a halfway decent striker who has Premier League experience seems like a pretty good option to me, as far as Rashford coverage goes. I didn't realize I was going to be defending this signing until two seconds ago, but <laughs> here we are. Strange territory. <laughs> it, does, it does make sense for once for them not to be wasting money on a player, but it's just... To get him in on loan to cover the gap, like, yes, proven Premier League goal scorer, whatever. But the reason he was moved on from Watford was because he had a terrible, terrible year mm. where where he just wasn't scoring. And also, I don't think he works, a player like him would work in the system like Man United have. One of the reasons he worked really well was playing with Troy Deeney, where Troy Deeney was just his absolute battering ram, and he was also quite a physical presence, but a bit more, a bit quicker, and and things just worked out really well, and a lot of things fell for them in the season where everyone else was crap. So maybe they're just kind of banking on because this year Everyone's everyone crap. else is crap yeah. that that it's kind of <laughs> going to inspire that spirit of 2014 15 whenever when him and Troy Deeney scored something like 35 yeah. goals between it, them it was a long time ago for sure it was a long time ago and like you have to squint real hard 
to see where Martial and him can play off each other and have any success. It's not likely, mm-hmm. but it's it's worth a bet, I would say. All right, but what about Bruno Fernandez? We got to talk about him at least a little bit, right? Because he's he's like a world class, maybe not world class talent, but like top level talent. The analytics people love him. All I've read is a bunch of articles this week about how good his numbers are and how he like can tackle and his he brings passing to Manchester United apparently, which is like what they desperately need and what we've been saying. Like if Pogba was there, that would what he would offer. So you mean to say they've already got a player there that that can do it? Yes, but he's <laughs> not allowed to play. Yes, there. that's the okay. One. Yeah. Yeah. So just play a load of money for a guy who's done it in Liga Noche that isn't very good. Although he has been playing with Yannick Alassi for like two years. So you know at least he'll probably know how to beat a load of people down the right-hand side and spray across across to the opposite touchline. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got that in him. He does not at all have that in him, listeners. <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> that is not the type of player he is. We'll wait to see. We'll wait to see. <laughs> okay. I don't think one play, just to kind of round it off, I'm sure many people do, I don't think adding in one very expensive player as a name to placate fans has ever worked for Man United in the past three seasons. So I wouldn't hold your breath on it. They've not done that before, have they? No, it's, it's very much a, oh yeah, we're trying to do this thing with young people and bringing them through, oh, we're going to spend 80 million on this name again. So You're reserving judgment, are you? Always. Always. Apart, well, no, it's going to be shit. Oh, okay, that's your judgment. There it is. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. Uh, Newcastle, they brought in Bentaleb. That's a thing. And Danny Rose. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. And is, I think that's quite good for them. I think that works out for everyone. I think that works for Spurs because Mourinho hates him. It's funny, bearing in mind, like a couple of years ago, he was talking about oh, you shouldn't have to Google signings, uh, meaning that obviously he sees himself as a bit above that level and then he's now gone on loan to Newcastle. Not to kind of insult everyone, but it's a bit like... Uh, but but to insult out. everyone. <laughs> yeah, more to insult him. Um, but yeah, that, that definitely did come out. Of I think it makes definite sense. I think Newcastle... Um, could do with him being there. He needs the game time uh, to do stuff, and Mourinho needs shot of him. Yeah, Tottenham feel like they've kicked on a bit beyond the Danny Rose level. I feel. Mm. They did. I mean, all their players are on loan, like Bentaleb, Danny Rose, and then they signed a guy called Valentino Lazzaro. Oh, love which that! I enjoy his name <laughs> um, very much. I want to see him and uh, Sam Maximan together. Yeah. That I feel like that's a kind of yeah. a good vibe going right there. Yeah, sign me up. And uh, gaffer tapes uh, for all the former gaffer tapes listeners. Um, Rolando Aaron's has gone out on loan again. Uh, if you remember the name, to Motherwell. Yeah, she's not bad. Thanks for asking. <laughs> she is. Well. <laughs> oh, oh, have you ever not been in a five-a-side league with someone whose team is called I Know Your Mother Well? <laughs> Classic. Classic. Yeah. Norwich. <laughs> any uh, any names you recognize there? Duda. Can you pronounce any of those names? Andre Duda. Andre Duda. Um, there's a poo joke in there's there. There's fifteen Definitely. names on the out list, including some that look like video game characters, and someone who went to the Tampa Bay Rowdies, which is not even an MLS team. The Tampa Bay Rowdies. That combines both because his name is Louis Lomas. He sounds a bit like a Marvel character and he's gone to play for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. I can only assume something is going to happen in Tampa. He's going to get bitten by a dolphin and he's somehow going to get superpowers when he comes back. Yeah, the dolphin's going to be hopped up on Monster Energy Drink. (laughs) (laughs) Fight milk! Uh, (laughs) Caramel. Obviously, yeah. It's going to be Caramel. Yeah, uh, the names of their two transfers in, much like Crystal Palace, have also been loaned out. Uh, so these seem like championship signings, uh, potentially, for when they get relegated. Um, yeah, prep. Yeah. Just got to start uh, get the work in on that. Yeah, Sheffield United. Yeah, a team who is very much not going to get relegated, Sheffield United. <laughs> very much not, the bastards. Um, they got Jack Rodwell, who was unattached. Yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> he, oh, wait. No, he's been relegated at like all of it. Yeah, they shouldn't have signed him. That's... That's like a poison chalice right there. Oh dear, Rodwell curse. Yeah, they also signed uh, Richaro Zivkovic, who I used to sign on FIFA 2017 because he was really good. So, yeah. you know, that's probably not very good. He was signed from the Chinese second division, so it just shows how the FIFA rating system is incredibly accurate. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, a big one, actually, to go to the next team, Tottenham. Steve Bergwin, who got a beautiful goal earlier today. Fucking, hey, off the chest volley. Already paying off, coming in from Eindhoven, PSV. But I thought Tottenham weren't meant to make signings. I know, I know. They nah. also got Giovanni Lo Celso on a permanent, which is a very good pickup. Yeah, yeah, he's been a, he's done a pretty good job for them uh, since he's come in, and Mourinho really likes him. And then obviously they've brought in Gedson Fernandez uh, from Benfica. But he's on loan, so again, it's kind of Mourinho using those connections to kind of start to form the team in his own image. I'd imagine. I mean, obviously, the notable out is Christian Eriksen, finally, so they actually got a bit of money for him. Uh, I'm not sure how much, but... 20, wasn't it? Wow, really that much? Yeah, yeah, a lot of money. And he's joining the former Premier League All-Stars, <laughs> collecting over in Italy. You say All-Stars. Former All-Stars. <laughs> you say former All-Stars. <laughs> it's like a testimonial game, almost. I mean, who else is there? Lukaku, uh, you got Ashley Young. Sanchez, Alexis Sanchez, isn't he there? Alexis Sanchez is an Inter on loan. Yeah, good one. Um, <laughs> now now Christian Eriksen. This is my fantasy team 2015. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Fucking hey. Once again, egg on my face for saying Inter Milan couldn't afford these players at the start of the season. Yeah. <laughs> well, you weren't to know their value would largely crash. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. But they're doing quite well in the league. But anyway. Yeah, and former Premier League winning, uh, speaking of people who were really good four years ago in the Premier League, Antonio Conte is their manager too. Who had that amazing run when all those guys were really good. It's like, it's just throwback over there. Uh, but yeah, you do kind of think that now Mourinho's trying to make his stamp on it. And if he is actually getting signings, you wonder, uh, especially player like Bergwijn, um, are they going to go big in the summer as well just to kind of double up on that? Because at the minute, like they're chasing Champions League and with Chelsea slipping up so much, they're right there now. Yeah, they are. They're only four points off now. Four points? I Oof. believe so. Yeah. God, Jesus Christ, this league is so shit. Um, yeah, it really is. <laughs> so bad. Uh, so it'd be interesting, especially because, you know, we said before whether he would want to kind of stay out of Europe to then get a real big push on the league. Um, but it seems like they're just going to fall into the European places. Well, I don't. Th- I think it's still overwhelmingly Chelsea likely. But... <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I we, like I said, have just been bouncing between 60 and 70%. We're still at 65 like Tottenham took likelihood points off of Wolves and United, so yeah. And Peterborough, like four weeks ago, were like ninety percent to get relegated, and now they're fifty percent <laughs> no, for promotion. So, so look at what happens there. You know, shout out Peterborough, an emphatic, emphatic four-one win against Ipswich. Ipswich. Yeah. Ips, Ipswich. Yeah. Fuck you, Ed Sheeran. You yeah. Fuck you, Ginger <laughs> Prick. You guys are now the most likely to make the playoffs of all of the teams. Yes. Get Which is in. obviously like a weird percentage because there's those two teams at the top that like aren't going to make the playoffs. So you're like, you're the best of the middle class is basically what that means. There you go, Ian. You're middle class. All I've ever wanted. Mm. <laughs> the yeah. best of the middle class. Yeah. We've been smashing it lately. 4-1 against Ipswich. Lovely old job. I mean, there's as I said to you before, there's teams with uh, games in hand, but you'd rather have points on the board, wouldn't you? Points is guaranteed, mate. Points make prizes. That's a fact. Tenth up to third in about three or four weeks. Speaking of moving up the table, though, not quite tenth up to third, but we do have Watford. Sort of move from 20th to 19th now. Well, they're on their way up. <laughs> it hey, is up. Hey, it's the smallest amount. It's the smallest amount, but that Gotta is up. Gotta take the positives where you can get them, Chuck. I concede. I concede to you, sir, that that is up indeed. <laughs> One more result and they could be in 15th. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. And then above Palace, probably. And then Palace will get really, oh, Fuck off. I hate this team. <laughs> You've got a little cushion to Brighton. I mean, your form's <laughs> terrible, but you have got a little cushion. Yeah. I mean, two weeks ago, there were nine teams between us and relegation. Now there's four. So, e- yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Watford, the amazingly named Ignacio Pusetto. That is a yes. good name. From Udinese, uh, who I believe it's the same owners as Watford. So, you know, read into that what you will. <laughs> Collusion. Collusion. Oh, yeah, the Pozzo family have never... They are the reason, uh, the Watford owners, are the reason why there is the you can only loan two players from the same team rule. Because, <laughs> yeah, so the year <laughs> Palace got promoted, uh, we played Watford in the playoff final. You remember after it was Watford, Leicester, Anthony yep. Knockhart went to take the penalty, saved by uh, Almunia, uh, blast from the past there. Watford go up the other end, Deeney scores, absolute mental. 
Yeah. Um, then they played Palace in the playoff final, which we won. Extra time, no big deal. Kevin Phillips penalty, standard. <laughs> um, but 10 of their starting 11 were on loan from, I think, Udinese. 10 Love of them. It. When, Love and, it. And Zola, that was when Zola was their manager, I believe. Um, so, yeah. So, after that year, they kind of went, ah. Because they didn't think any team would actually loan out an entire squad's worth of people. But because they owned both teams, they just did it and they didn't give a damn. So, there you go. Yeah. Chuck's History Corner. The good old days. Um, actually, they've got some fantastic names that have been loaned out or, or transferred out. Dimitri Folkier. Marvin Ziegler. Pontus Dalberg. Wow. <laughs> that is a good one. That's a good, <laughs> those are good names. They should have kept those players. Oh, it's good. But <laughs> Ignacio Pusetto and Teddy Perkins in. Love it. <laughs> Teddy Perkins. Where's he from? The 50s? Working on a factory floor. Unattached. <laughs> Unattached. Yes. So maybe. Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Brilliant. All right, let's go, let's go to West Ham. Teddy Perkins. Fucking Peaky Blinders. Let's go to West Ham. He got, they got Darren Randolph. Yeah, Randy Darren. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was good a few years ago. He's an all right keeper. They got rid of that awful one. Yeah, they're smashing through the keepers, it seems. It's like, yeah, keepers are the new strikers at West Ham. Yeah. <laughs> Can we have one? <laughs> Please. Get Fabianski, man. Get Fabianski off him. I would 100% take him over. Pay Kepler. 30 million for Fabianski. So okay. much. <sighs> Must be nice making signings. Must be nice. I wouldn't know. Yeah, you got at least you signed an injured one, but you still signed someone. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, anything for these West Ham guys? Really? They have someone who went out named Roberto. That was the shit keeper that made a few that played a few games and then was absolutely awful, but also angry at the same time. And they signed Jared Bowen, who was the top scorer at the moment in the championship, but I think he was the top scorer last season as well. Oh, that's right. He had been linked with Palace, right? Yeah. The metrics love him, actually. I read an article about that guy. I forgot his name. But yeah, the metrics yeah, love yeah. that Yeah, which, which means he'll get relegated with West Ham, uh, and then he'll just be stuck there. So yep. He'll be the next Tammy Abraham for the next three years before he can finally come up and find a Port League team to play for. Probably. And for the last team, we have Wolverhampton Wanderers, who signed someone whose last name means Bell in Spanish, and he yeah. was unattached. <laughs> Campana. Oh. Leonardo Campana. Oscar's Spanish corner. Yeah. This could just be like a me translating words and you reading names out for 45 minutes and I think. Yeah, newsflash, that's what it has been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we talk about the one or two games that were even remotely interesting? No. No. <laughs> okay. Let me just give out a Burnley of the week at least. We were going to give it to Chelsea because wildly undeserved 2-2 draw. Uh, 1.6 to 0.8 on XG. But then another <laughs> game happened. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should talk about that game. Cute, yeah. cute, 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 cue up the jingle. Ooh, they're better than they ought to be. Burn of the week. Tottenham 2, Manchester City 0, Tottenham 0. 0.4 to oh. Manchester City's 3.2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I genuinely did not know that. That is a delightful to hear. Man, I was all about loving Man City until recently, and then fuck them. They've made their bed for themselves by being utterly crap this year. It's their fault that Liverpool are winning this stupid title. Yeah, blame it's them. everyone's fault. Liverpool, and that's why I think Liverpool fans can't believe it, because they feel like every team is in on it, and that somehow <laughs> they're the butt of the joke, and that maybe potentially with all like these horrific things happening around the world, and fires, and the hailstones, and walls being built, and viruses that are wiping out mankind, and Brexit, and Palace making no transfers, that mm. something... That everything is lining up against them to somehow stop Liverpool from winning the league, but just giving them the maximum amount of hope before it is. That's why they're <laughs> still, they are still, they are now with, without even a game in hand, without a game in hand now, that's gone. Everyone's on level terms. They are 22 points clear on the 2nd of February. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, uh. with 13 games left to play, this is Utter madness! I don't. I can't even work out now when they'll win the league next week. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. As Who of knows? right now, if the, everything holds, it'll be against you guys at Palace. Okay. 
but a hundred out of a hundred and two points is what they've made. They've now got an entire calendar year winning at home, only winning in the league at home. Like they just keep keep going. They're six games off of Arsenal's record. Uh, seven games, seven games off of Arsenal's record. Everyone else is just conspiring to be utter Kazi. <laughs> Well, let's go back to the uh, the everyone else part of that, and let's actually let's. Did you happen to watch the City Spurs game? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. So let's let's take this moment by moment in. Let's start with the red card, the Sterling incident. Do you think that was red? See, I didn't see this. So what what actually happened? Sorry. So like the ball gets away from Sterling, um, and like Ali sort of picks it up, but it's, it is done. It's very quick. Sterling goes in and. He catches uh, Ali's ankle, and right. like um, in real time, I almost thought Sterling had been the one that, that was fouled. If anything, yes, I thought the same thing. Yeah, okay, absolutely. So that, yeah, and then when when it slowed down, it it does look like Sterling goes sort of studs up and he's over the top of uh, over the top of his ankle, and it's one of them where if he'd have been going faster or more force, he could have broke his ankle, sort of thing. But right. Okay. He wasn't he wasn't like full sprint or anything. He wasn't sort of like off the ground and putting all of his body weight into it or anything. So yeah, okay. It does it does it's a weird it is a weird one because you've seen him seen him given, but a yellow felt right. Yeah, and you know how sometimes slow mo makes things It did make it always look worse. makes things look worse. Yeah. Yeah, in real time it looked so close to a fifty fifty. And then in slow mo I was like, Oh fuck, he almost broke his ankle. Maybe it could be a red card. So it could have gone either way. If if you guys said you looked at it and straight away you thought, oh, Sterling got fouled. And like if the referees awarded a yellow card, VAR won't look at that. They don't look at yellow cards. Or to give yellow cards. I can't I don't even know anymore. Didn't it help Palace out this week? Mm, yeah, because the red card got overturned. It couldn't help with the own goal though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no way. Sorry, oh, sorry, that own goal was too good though. Nah, but I you know what, Guaita, he he's allowed. Roy Hodgson basically said that. Yeah. He came yeah. up to him afterwards and apologised. He's like, you've got nothing to apologise for. Were it not for you, and this is pretty much verbatim yeah. uh, what Hodgson said in an interview afterwards, were it not for you, we would not be anywhere close to where we are. And and that's absolutely true. He's hugely loved. And you know what? With all the shit that's been going on, it was just horrific timing mm. that it was uh, our best player of the year um, doing that in that mind-boggling situation uh, from a corner Against a team that hadn't even had a fucking shot. That was like if if Sheffield United hadn't had a hadn't had a shot by that point, and if that had, the game had finished there, then that definitely would have been Burnley of the week because it <laughs> would have been just zero and you won. <laughs> All right, so not necessarily a red on Sterling. What about the first penalty? Yeah, the, no problems with that. Obvious penalty, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. De- definitely Good. a penalty. So then, but then we get the the situation where we play on for two and a half minutes because there was nowhere to blow the whistle. Well, yeah, like, people were complaining about that, but literally, what do you want him to do in that situation? I, I know, but it just felt weird, like because it did feel weird. Yes, you know, I said, I said, uh, Kelly was sort of half watching the match as well, and I was like, you know, this can still go back to a penalty, like even though we've sort of been playing on the, this last two and a half minutes could mean nothing. The ball, well, the referee didn't blow up for the penalty. So yeah. the play carried on, and just the ball didn't go out of play or anything. So the ref can stop the game at any point. They do it for head injuries and bullshit. So, so what? After two and a half minute, he was meant to award a penalty. Well, no, that it took them that long to get in his ear and say we want to, you know, you want to overturn that. That was a penalty. So then two he, and a half minutes, yes. roughly that. The yeah. penalty Fucking itself hell. got taken almost four minutes after the foul was made. Yeah. It was a really obvious penalty. Yeah, it was a definite penalty. Like, even in real time, I was like, that's an obvious fucking penalty. Yeah. Why wasn't that given? <laughs> yeah. okay and, but no. then, because they just kept kind of going and playing, it was literally, like, almost three minutes later before there was a break in play. And then the ref was like, did this, you know, the screen VAR yeah. hand yeah. signal. It's a penalty. And it was like, penalty. It was like, it felt really weird. It was They're odd. too fucking yeah. precious about this whole, oh, protect the game and the way it was. Like in I this agree with you. Fucking back in the day, Middle Ages approach to football. Like it doesn't, it, it's more jarring if you don't. And yeah. why are you worrying about the dickheads? It's like the, I mean, you have that right. So how can you allow play to go on for two and a half minutes 
when if you if you guys are saying it was clear cut or whatever, any referee should be able to see, and that's probably the clear and obvious error which has muddied everything. But if yeah. a referee feels that he can't stop play because the ball hasn't gone out, like there, are, you can already do that um, for head injuries or whatever. And if not, you can just resume with a drop ball and have it be competitive, whatever you want. But it's also the sense that all of the kind of the referees are deliberately not. Are not getting the flack anymore, so they're just not making these decisions. So they yeah, don't they're have just to. not blowing their whistles yeah. so much more For than they ex- used to. I think, and and compared to this, a perfect example is what happened in the Southampton Liverpool game. And Danny Ings goes through, runs through the contact with Fabinho, and tries to stay on his feet because he knows he's going to get to the ball. Yeah. Fabinho clocks this, and it's very very obvious what he does. Clocks that he's staying up and he's going to get to the ball, so goes sticks his foot out again to kick him to kick out his leg to then drop him to the floor. Obvious penalty, it's ridiculous. Then Liverpool go up the other end and score. But there's no way VAR then checked that as a possible penalty, but there is no way whatsoever and this isn't a Liverpool conspiracy thing. I just think this is yeah. the game in general that they wouldn't do it. Maybe it does favour a bigger team, but what whatever. Yeah. But they would not at that point cancel out that goal to then go back to a penalty there. Like it's just not in that situation, no ref, because then it's back on the ref and they wouldn't do it. And it's ridiculous that they wouldn't. And that's going to happen. Like, it's absolutely going to happen. It's only a matter of time where, like, it should have been a pen. They let they wave play on. The whistle doesn't go. The other team goes and scores. And then what happens to that goal? What yeah. happens to the pen? I and literally don't know. Like, I don't know clear, the rules. It's, it's that clear and obvious error thing that they can just hide behind instantly. Absolutely. Because they can just say, oh, it wasn't obvious to me. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go then. So nothing can get overturned? They're using the context of that situation to make the bar higher about what yep. they overturn. And it's not con- it's not contextual. Yeah. A, foul sh- a foul shouldn't be contextual, yep. whether it's the situation, the type of game that it's played in. I don't. I, I think this is bullshit, the thing where it's, oh, well, it's a derby, so it's a higher-tempoed game, so you should, no, fuck off, it's arbitrary. If something's a yeah, foul... Yeah, the way they reckless- don't give yellows out in like when it's like Everton versus early. Liverpool or Chelsea versus Tottenham. Chelsea versus Tottenham gets real fucking violent sometimes. Yeah, and they won't give a red card for a challenge that will be like a stamp or something horrific because it's like the third minute of the game. Yeah, or yeah, that too. They'll they'll give a free kick for something that they would never give a penalty for the same thing. Yeah. Well, so Chuck, listen, because it gets even better. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does because the so this you know they play for three minutes. VAR comes back. They give the penalty. Finally, it's a fucking weird situation. Everybody's thrown off because it's so much later. He steps up to take the pen, and it's saved. The keeper was off his line, so everyone was like, oh, is that going to go to VAR to make if him take it again? That doesn't go to VAR. It doesn't, that doesn't right. go to VAR, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Only encroachment does. Yeah. And then on the rebound, the keeper cleans out Raheem Sterling. It, like, it goes to VAR again. The ref instantly, Mike Dean instantly gave a second penalty. <laughs> <laughs> like, straight away. And, so yeah. then, that and goes then it went to VAR, to VAR again. again. Yeah. And it and they took that penalty away, right? Yeah, they overturned that and said, which I think hell. it was a penalty. Well, you, yeah, that's the one where no one agreed whether it was a penalty or not. The first one is clearly a fucking pen. Yes, this absolutely. one I thought was a pen, but you said it wasn't, right? I didn't think it was. No, I thought that uh, while there might be contact between uh, Lloris and Sterling, it, I felt it was fairly minimal. I don't think he was particularly impeded. He made he made a big deal out of that. I mean, he grabbed his foot. I don't. Yeah, but the, and also the ball had already gone. <laughs> I think. That's I, true. The ball had gone. The ball was going out of bounds, probably. Yeah, I just, I just don't think it affected. To call that a penalty for me is is a bit much because I just don't. I think the situation was done. It was just. Yeah, it, yeah. but nine times out of ten, if the keeper rushes and he doesn't touch the ball and he touches the foot, that just gets given as a penalty always. Yeah, which I think is probably why Mike Mike Dean instantly gave it because you're like, look, you yeah. know what you've done in that situation. So then VAR overturned it, which I was, was crazy because it was a borderline call at best. I was surprised when VAR overturned it. Yeah, I'll give you that, definitely. Because how is that? Because then it's just using that clear and obvious error thing in the other way. <laughs> because it's, right, if, exactly. if, the co- if the contact's made and you've given the decision for a penalty, it's one of those ones where VAR shouldn't overturn it, but also VAR possibly shouldn't give it if you see what i mean which right, comes up a lot with the play on the call on the field and this is what's messy and what isn't you know what's mad is a that they've said because of one instant in one competition uh, in the women's world cup that var shouldn't be used for encroachment whatever fine why why do you use it for the other arbitrary rules but not this one but also what the fuck does the assistant referee do for any of these penalties 
Their job is literally to move up to the edge of the box and stand on the line to solely watch to see if the goalkeeper comes off his line. And and the fact that all of this is de facto getting put on to on top of, you know, the VAR argument of why aren't they giving this, why isn't this on it? Why isn't the person who is paid to be there not doing the job of, oh look, there's just a massive load of daylight there. Ref, you should probably just retake that penalty. Like yeah, how how is that absolutely. hard? Then it, and it it just makes me think that you just should get rid of assistant referees because they don't do anything. They they literally don't do anything anymore. There are there have been times this week where the ball's gone out of play uh, and it's been allowed to play on, so they can't tell the lines anymore. Um, <laughs> that was there was one for a corner. I think there was one for a throw in as well. I remember with Casper Schmeichel clearing it; it was way out. They're not checking for encroachment on penalties. A lot of the time by refs, they're overruled and told not to flag and give fouls because the ref will give fouls. And they don't give offsides anymore because the video assistant referee does it. And they're encouraged not to. Why is there a... Vi- there, there should be no need for an assistant referee. I think we need a referendum on this. In a post-Brexit world, you know, yeah. referendums left and right. Yeah, it don't work. I would... I'd rather get rid of the two assistant referees, have have two actual referees. But are they English referees or are they European referees? We need to know. <laughs> it, it will we be need a, to know. It will be a points-based system. That, <laughs> <laughs> and that's as political as I'll get. Are we ending the first half there? Should we just get rid? We just get rid? <laughs> yeah, so Chuck, it wasn't even done there though, because then... Oh, for fucking hell. This is, this is like Brexit. After the penalty gets overturned for VAR... Uh, Sterling and Loris are getting into it with a bit of like not fighting handbags, and so everyone comes over, and Zinchenko comes flying in, <laughs> a, like ninety miles an hour, ready to fucking go. And he he was by far the most aggressive of anybody. Yep. Who like this whole fracas broke out over did you dive or did I actually make contact? Like, cause uh, Loris was basically saying that like. Sterling had dived and looking for the pen. Yeah. And then Zinchenko is the one that like comes in flying from the fucking left back position to be like, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight. And that was how he got his first yellow, which is what led to the red later on. Yep. So everything in those like two minutes, three minutes, the whole game was right there. I suppose it's at that point then that you kind of, you can feel that the the momentum or the the positivity of the game switches and it's Man City were kind of fucked from then on, especially because they have yeah, like and Gundogan playing for them and he's awful. Up to that point, I I tweeted this from our account, the XG up to that point was like 2.9 to 0.2 or 0.1 or something <laughs> fucking That's absurd. Fucking wow. ridiculous. And then from there, they, went, they both went 0.3 to 0.3. So even down to 10 men after the red card... <laughs> City weren't outplayed by Tottenham. They got, no. they got scored on twice, but it was 0.3 to 0.3. So anyway, that was that match. Fun game. Fun game. Better than some of them. Better than fucking Burnley Arsenal. Better than Man United Wolves. Fucking hell. Getting the bin. Yeah. Oh my God. That was like the most boring. Knob Awful. off. Awful. Knob off. There was no, like, the Chelsea Leicester game was mental, but we're not going to talk about that because we'll be here for another. Oh, yeah. Chelsea Leicester was we'll fun. Be, yeah. yeah. We'll be here for another 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I do want to say that that does bring Tottenham's. Top four chances up to 20%. They basically took 3% Ooh, off Wolves okay. and 5% mm. off United. Yeah. So Chelsea are still at 64. They were at 67 going into today. Um, but Tottenham went from 10 to 20, basically, and the other two guys fell yeah. way down. Cool. And Watford and West Ham both gave up two goal advantages. Watford were 2-0 up and lost 3-2, and West Ham were up 3-1. And nearly so close to it being 4-3 Brighton, it was yeah. ridiculous at the end. So, ha, 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 I have very little to hold on to, guys. <laughs> well, let's see uh, what we can get in the second half to help cheer Chuck up a little bit with some listener stuff for FPL or the uh, Predictor League. So stick around after the jump, and we'll see you in a bit. Welcome back to the Mars Offside podcast. We've spoken far too much about football and the terrible, terrible January transfer window uh, in the first half of the show. I'm really sorry uh, about that. Mostly that's just an apology to myself. Um, But now we haven't had it for a few weeks and it's time for the predicted league and league enough predictions where we go through what people predicted back in time. But now it's time. Oh shit, he's going into a time hole. So is it forward? Time. Oh, oh shit. Um, Oscar. OP. OPP. How can I explain it? I'll take it frame by frame it. Uh, <laughs> you are not top anymore. Oh. 
You are in joint fourth with Finley Stimson Yay. Yay. Go on, and Get in, Dan Parkinson. Uh, Ian, you and I, we are decidedly mid-table. Okay. Uh, me, you, Carmen, right in the middle there with uh, 70 points. You're in between the two of us. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Ian's the filling in that sandwich. Be, yeah. Where you've always wanted to be. Uh, and naturally, top three, all tied as well. So, oh. you know, it's just draw city. Much like the league is really boring and everyone keeps drawing <laughs> at the minute. Uh, Lynn, Dave Mateo, and Van Dam, Sam Danby, top of the pile, 62. So only two points ahead of the chasing pack of three. <laughs> okay. Who's top? Sorry. Well, Sam Danby, because he entered first. Oh, that's right. Okay. There's the tie break. They're all tied. All tied. The top. Who's three. in the relegation zone? Uh, Johnny Worthington, Adam P, and Johnny OG, reigning champion. No. Johnny OG. Oh dear. Yeah, it's a fall from grace. <laughs> and poor Adam P too. Who, uh, like, we don't even make fun of Arsenal anymore, really. <laughs> it's Pretty gone, sure we do. It's gone beyond that. Not, not that much. Not like we used to. Yeah. It just feels bad now, you know. It, it's really hard to when our teams are, for our own standards, doing decidedly shit as well. That um, is true. It is very true. I can't really keep punching there, but, you know. <laughs> we went on for a good five minutes about how Cedric was a terrible signing earlier, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> so, Predictor League, ban. That's predictions football. But then we have the FBL team as well, which finally wildcarded. Yes. Yay for me, but chose Oscar's suggestion. Boo for me. Um, <laughs> I mean, both of our teams were basically the same. What does that say about you? Yeah, I know. My heart wasn't in it. I'm not going to lie, guys. It's sort <laughs> of like when you, you campaign. I know. It's like when Oscar campaigned for Pulisic for ages. And I was like, oh, you know what? I just can't be arsed. Um, so sorry, guys. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> well, I was literally arsed. I put it together on the toilet at like five in the morning on a <laughs> Friday. Fantastic, and it shows. Having not slept for most of this week. Oh, because of your tragedies at home, but we won't go into that. Um, yeah, but I yes, won, so there six, you go. 64 points. Uh, exactly half of those points coming from Salah Captain. <laughs> like a lot of people this week, I think. Like most people, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, we had four players that returned and yeah. got 64, so... That's not bad. <laughs> Joe Actually. Gomez, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Nick Pope, six points each. Salah with 32. And then the binary selection of Lundstrom, Grealish, De Bruyne, Perez, Troyore, a massive three points. Uh, Raul Jimenez and Sergio Aguero. Anybody good on the bench? Any good bench points that we missed out on? Uh, another lovingly, uh, lovingly, lovely named player, I will say, Jaffet. Tanganga. Tanganga. Uh, I quite like saying his name. And he's been a good player so far. Six points. The only four million defender that you can rely on now. I mean, Lundstrom it was originally four million, but it seems like... Not anymore. Ditched him from my team, mate. Yeah, same here. I'm thinking yeah. about it. I'm thinking same about here. it. I haven't had such a discount, but like, what's that discount helped me out for? Exactly, yeah. I've cashed out. Cashed out. Cashed out. I'm an influencer. Everyone's jumping off of... Lord Lundstrom or whatever the FPL nerds call him. Oh, uh, up well, and while we're in between, on update on my team. I uh, remember four hours ago when I said I was going to roll my transfer. Yeah, I remember that. I was stunned. I've only just recovered. I've already taken a hit since then. <laughs> oh, <God>. Jesus <laughs> Christ. The moment I said it out loud, I was like, guys, I'm thinking about rolling my transfer. It's a long game week where there might be some injuries. Five minutes later, nope, taking a hit. <laughs> Gotta do it. What's your hit? What have you taken? Please tell me you got rid of Willian. Uh, I think I did. I don't even actually remember. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I, this is how little I care about a feel. I do it, and then five minutes later, I'm like, is that what I did? I'm logged in as the pod team right now. Give me one sec. It's like talking to Finley when he comes home from school. What did you do today? Nothing. Uh, can't remember. Yeah, I, You were just there. You were just there in that building. What were you doing in that building before <laughs> What did they I do to, to you? you? What are you mentally blocking out? What yeah. have they... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what, what, what memories are you repressing? Did they touch you? When did they touch you? This is all getting cut out. Can't no, leave yeah, of course. Fine. Okay, great. Um, uh, let's see. I did Vardy and Willian out for Mares and Jimenez. Those are good transfers. Uh, Tell me. Uh, yeah, apart from the Mares bit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Why? Mares has been starting and fantastic. He has been. He has been, yeah. But, it'll, you know, Pep, Pep Roulette will bite you in the ass at some point. Yeah, probably. And then I'll just take a hit to get him out. Of course you will, yeah. Next, next week, probably. <laughs> Done and done. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, yeah, we wildcarded. It did all right, but mostly due to Salah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, it's Where not... are we? Where? What are we thinking for this week? What do we do? 
Uh, I say we roll the transfer, actually. What? Um, this is my wild card team. So, like, I'm not going to suggest a week, a transfer, like, a week after my wild card team just came in. I don't think there's anything wrong with the team. Okay. Bit of an off week, but especially, like, I wanted to do on my real team, but I don't have the patience for. With the weird, long, super long week and the bunch of teams having breaks, there's a long time for someone to get injured between now and the game week after. So I say we roll the transfer. Ian, if we, much much like earlier with his own team, Ian, I think if we talk for long enough, he'll change his mind from rolling the transfer <laughs> and it. we'll suggest the points yeah, here. Yeah, I'm just going to go take a break real quick. I'll be back in like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to convince me. Also, I don't think it's this week. That This week's just a normal length sort of game week. You've got to worry about it this week. No, because the next time Chelsea plays, I'll be at Disneyland. This this week coming, uh, the fixtures cover the eighth, the yeah, ninth, yeah, fourteenth, fifteenth. What I'm saying is the decision, you, the decision to do a transfer in this week, yeah, wouldn't make any difference, would it? Yeah, it's affected by the really long. Oh, yeah, I see what, kind of what you mean. But there's there's a long time between potentially, but potentially for from us suggesting it, we could be getting in a player that isn't playing for another fifteen days as we record. I think that's probably what Oscar means. Like it's that is what I mean. And also, if someone gets injured, then and like we have exact money right now, we would have two transfers to fix that injury, potentially shift funds around if needed. I see. Okay, I see. So, sorry, rolling into that game week, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Exactly. Oh, I see yeah. What yeah. You mean. Logic. Oh, I see what you mean. Are you got any suggestions, Chuck? Are uh, you not going to go first with your terrible, terrible, boring suggestions? Oh, I've got a boring one, boy. Oh, bore me up, Buttercup. <laughs> uh, Lundstrom. Cash out, let's go. Cash and out. And I will go for Southampton's Stevens. We've already got him in the team. Oh, yes, we have. Fucking dickhead. Oh, I've done an Oscar, haven't I? I haven't properly looked. Yeah, well, um, at least at least financially, the deal is possible. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if not, because you can't have, you know, two of the same player. Yeah, I'm always like, we'll take Tanganga for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Can't afford that? No. Oh, no. Damn it. <laughs> okay. I will go for uh, Lascelles with Newcastle. He's cheap, 4.2. Let's he plays two out Ooh. of three clean sheets for Newcastle recently. So, yeah, let's go. That's not a terrible suggestion. I suppose especially if we've got the double Liverpool defence anyway, that we're basically only going to play one yeah. defender out of three. not going to play him that often, but at least he's huh. going to play most times, unlike Lundstrom at the minute, apparently. He seems to have two players ahead of him in the pecking order at the minute. Yeah, yeah, very strange. Since he's not playing as a defender, yeah, well, I'm that. Yeah. <laughs> it is, you know, the benefit. Um, do I go? Well, we've yeah, fuck it. We've spoken enough about how they're shit. So uh, let's get rid of KDB, um, and I'm gonna full on jump on the January transfer bandwagon and go for Steven Bergvain. That is aggressive. Yeah, Jeez. aggressive. Two point six in the bank. Uh, we get to sing Berg Bergvain. Wow. He's gone to my head. Um, you be forty. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so that yes. that's my suggestion. Um, Did you know that there's two UB forties? Have I told you guys this? What? Well, that's UB eighty. <laughs> no. So <laughs> two brackets UB forty. Yeah. <laughs> two times or UB forty squared? Because otherwise, that's UB sixteen hundred. <laughs> it's a whole different thing. That sounds like a sexy robot. UB sixteen hundred, right? Just give it a few years. You'll see. Booby. Um, so the lead singer left this band, right? And then he went and he got a bunch of other guys and started touring under the name of UB40. Except that all the other, the rest of the band that wasn't the lead singer got a new singer in and they started touring as UB40. And they sued each other. And I don't remember exactly what happened, but I know that two there are two different UB40s. So be careful which one you go see in concert because one is good <laughs> and one is bad. But they're both UB40. So don't go see them. The singer <laughs> always sounds like he's having a poo. <laughs> right. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yes, all of our listeners will do their due diligence before they go to see UB40. <laughs> the same thing happened with Buck's Fizz. Because I've, I've mixed the Fizz, which is that spin-off one. <laughs> 
like a few times on telly. Yeah, and it's three quarters of the band, isn't it's it? It's three quarters of them, but they can't call it Bucks Fizz because the other guy owns the name, so it's just the Fizz. They're just called Cheryl whatever and whatever, formerly of Bucks Fizz. It's a very long <laughs> band name. It doesn't really roll off the tongue or, hit or fit on the marquees. Exactly, yeah. Costs them a lot in printing those backdrops. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Oscar for once doing the role transfer. Um, Ian's going for Lundstrom Laskeles, uh, and I'm going KDB for Bergvine. That's that's some varied choices this week. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. Uh, Oscar, you sure you want to roll the transfer? Yeah, actually, I'm I'm more... After hearing your suggestions, I'm very happy with mine. If at any point you just want to shout out a hit, just go for it. Yeah, we can even put it in the outro. Ian can put it in the edit in two days' time. That's absolutely (laughs) fine, mate. Okay, that's FPL. Ian, what listenership we got? We got some listenership. Listenership in Ian's corner. Yep, so let's take something... Ian's hole. Oh, no. <laughs> don't Ian's don't be coarse. <laughs> Are you man enough to enter Ian's hole? I'm, I'm not jingling that. <laughs> there is no way I'm jingling that. Are you... Oh, there's an echo in Ian's hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I might jingle that. <laughs> there's a town in Connecticut... Called My Anus? Yeah, called My Anus. There literally is a town called My Anus. M-I-A-N-U-S... I remember the show Jackass went there once, <laughs> but also we drive past it all the time going to and from my parents' house, like when we go back down to New York. You drive through my anus? Yeah, and I'm always like, oh, there's a tree in my anus. <laughs> oh, there's a gas station in my anus. And this is 10 years <laughs> that I've been making these jokes to Emily. Still funny. Every time we drive through this town, which is like about twice a month on average. <laughs> And it never gets old. Crucially, though, does she laugh? That's the important thing. No, she never has. Not once. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, sometimes she's just asleep. And I'm still, like, throwing my anus out there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. The amount of people who've driven through my anus. So many. Oh, terrible times. Um, If you want to help fund this... (laughs) <laughs> if you'd like to give money towards my anus <laughs> exactly you can donate towards my anus on patreon.com slash miles offside pod uh we've got some people who've done that they are on a slack that uh, chuck created where we all chat this sort of fucking nonsense non-stop there's a lot of slack in my anus <laughs> hey. oh dear Oh, dear. Oh, I wish the town was called Uranus now. That would have been so much better. It was fine. I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed Uranus. There's also a fan tracks league, draft league for our Patreon. In my anus? Um, yep. So I run a draft league in my anus. The most recent transaction in the draft league, Team Johnny OG has dropped Keppa. I think he'd rather go without a keeper. For <laughs> Just go without season. rather than have the Chelsea keeper. <laughs> okay. Much like Chelsea should, probably. Okay. Anyway. Enough of this nonsense. Uh, Mark on the Slack asked, I think maybe this is uh, born out of some personal experience here. Why does daytime drinking hurt so much the following day? Why does daytime drinking hurt my anus? Mark lives in my neck of the woods. I mean, it it does happen. It does happen. (laughs) Uh, Daytime drinking. I think daytime drinking hurts more that day. Like, if you don't sustain it, like, being at home and getting a hangover at, like, 9.30 at night. That can happen, can't it? If you don't if you don't power through and get into the power drinking, sort of, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah, embrace the Ashley and go full on, <laughs> like. Yeah. That's such a dangerous game to play at music festivals, especially. You start drinking at, like, 11. You're like, yeah, first band, woo, seven beers. And then, like, you don't drink for three hours in the afternoon because you're just watching so many sets or whatever. Or you're stuck somewhere. Yeah, and then by, like, dinner time, you have the worst hangover, right when the good bands are coming on, and you're like, fuck it, we're doing shots, I need to get through these, and it's just always a disaster. So, if you're going to a music festival, kids, don't start drinking until about five in the afternoon. No, I, don't, I disagree. <laughs> I think music festivals, it's all about keeping a good, sustained buzz. Like, you can't, you can't ever really properly peak at music festivals like you can start drinking in the morning like breakfast that's absolutely fine but you need to just keep if you're going into like the area where the bands are away from your tent you need to you need to just keep enough beers with you that you can keep up to a good level and then you wake up still slightly drunk enough that the beer in the morning just tops you up and you keep what, going like one one pint an hour that sort of rate no no you're not a pussy more than, like more, two more pints, than that. <laughs> couple couple of beers an hour yeah that's fine oh. get yourself to a good level of drunk and then you can maybe dip it down a bit. 
maybe have a bit more of a peak in the evening when you're seeing your good band. Mm. Uh, I don't know. On the other side of 30, the idea of two beers an hour for a whole day sounds like the worst fucking thing. I mean, you guys are the experts, right? England is literally the country with the highest alcoholism rate, so I defer to the, uh, you know, the gentleman uh, from yeah, I mean, Peter Bro and... We, I'm not going to say that we're experts on it, but we lobbied for it to be in the 2012 Olympics. Unsuccessfully so far, but we'll keep going. Yeah, especially early. I think that's why, like, if you walk around the streets at 11 o'clock at night in London, it is so horrific on a night because everyone's been drinking for six hours already. Yeah. <laughs> like, people go out early and people go out hard. Yeah. I mean, with the music festival thing, it doesn't really matter with me because I'm so pale that I'll have usually succumbed to sunstroke by about sort of 7 pm anyway. Oh, yeah, mm. that's the worst. So. Yeah. I got ha- half of my body got sunburned at Reading Festival in 2007, really? 2008. Yeah, because. But it's not the half you would expect. <laughs> yeah. It's my anus. The underside of my penis. Um, <laughs> so big and veiny. Um, uh. No, it was a, there was a day at the festival where pretty much every single band I actually wanted to see. So I went in early and got to the front and was there for the, the entire day. Um, and so the sun was obviously on one side of the stage. And so then the next day, literally almost directly down the middle of my neck, one half was red and one half was white. Oh, and that's I was brutal. in pain. Now, this is weird because I have had almost exactly the same experience. But, but it was your scalp. And that's why you have a hair, <laughs> yeah, you have hair like Two Face. <laughs> it yeah. never grew back. Never grew back. <laughs> That's actually the shape of his sunburn. It was a horseshoe shape. <laughs> strange clouds. Yeah. Really strange clouds. But sadly, mine doesn't have anywhere near the credibility because while you were at Reading Festival, I was at uh, Robbie Williams live at Nebworth. Wow. Yeah. I didn't pay for the ticket. I got offered it from someone who's a friend of theirs had dropped out. But I actually had a really lovely time. Good showman. I'm not, I'm not, I'm yeah. not against it. He's a good showman. Yeah. Um, I kind of regret not going to see Take That a few years ago when I was offered a free ticket. There you go. It was a very strange gig, that, because he had some very weird support acts, considering uh, it was Robbie Williams. I'm pretty sure, like, the first the first support acts on, who weren't even a thing at the time, were The Darkness. That's amazing. Yeah, I they saw... They have the Christmas they, song. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. They do have a Christmas song. Yes. And like, I don't even think the album was out yet. I think they were getting a, a few write-ups in Enemy, and bizarrely, they supported Robbie and I'm sure that I'm not making that up I'm going to wow. google it now but I'm sure maybe he did it as a favor because Nebworth was like a huge place right so it's yeah it's big exposure and a band like The Darkness like I've seen them live before and they were fantastic yeah like, it was only about brilliant. four years ago but they were really really good I love that about festivals you get to see such like weird bands true story for like your front row out of five people like do you guys remember that crazy metal band from like 15-ish years ago, Dragon Force. Yes. Where they had like the dueling guitar solo guys. Yeah, and they can't perform the same way live because they lay out all their guitar tracks about eight times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I saw them live. I was sitting at the front and I was just like, this is glorious. Who are these guys? <laughs> yeah. What it madness. Is, you're right, because you're, you're at a festival. There's a good five, six hours maybe where there's no one on that you specifically want to see. And your buddies are like, we're going to see this person. Do you want to come? And you're drunk as shit. So you're like, yeah. Let's go. Right. Check out these other support acts, right? So it started go. with it started with the darkness. This is fucking weird. Well remembered. At your age, that's impressive. Yeah, thanks, Good. mate. I had blanked this one out, but now I remember it. The second act on was Kelly Osborne. Wow. Really putting together our Christmas playlist over here. Kelly Osborne. Oh, Not I'm Kelly, Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Wrong Kelly. Come on. If I'd have seen Kelly Clarkson live before, it would have come up before now. Yeah, you you would remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would have saved it until now. Um, then the band Ash, who I fucking loved when I was a Naturally. kid. Naturally. Like, but again, bizarre choice. Then, the, then Moby. Oh. Yeah. I have a very funny Moby story if you guys want me to hear it. Tell you. Go. This is a couple of times removed now. So this is like... Someone I've never met story. Oh, so you made it but, up. Okay. No, no, Brilliant. no. Caveat so that one of my beginning. best friends, he was a groomsman at my wedding. At his work, there was a guy who, you know, everyone jokes about having a hall pass list of like, you know, if I ever met Hermione, allowed to try to woo Hermione. Right. And Emily okay. can't yeah, say anything. Yeah, yeah. Like, whatever, right? This guy's fiance had fucking Moby, of all people, Ooh. at the top of her list. 
And everyone had made fun of him for like forever about how his fiance's number one on her hall pass list was Moby. That's awful. And then she met Moby at a bar. No. And he's a bit of a sleaze, isn't he? And he's a bit of a sleaze. <laughs> and she fucked Moby. No. <laughs> and, and then the wedding got married. called off. Exactly. No. Because the guy was like, this was a fucking joke. What are you talking about? You went and cheated on me. That's not a real thing. Yeah, that's like a jokey thing that people say. But How they don't has actually... this not come up before? <laughs> Because I don't, like, it's not someone that I really know. It's, like, a friend's, co-worker's, ex-fiancé. But, like, how fucking crazy is that? One, that Moby was on her list. Yeah. Two, that she met him. Three, that she actually went through with it. And then four, the wedding got called off. Fuck. Craziness. Wow. So that's my Moby story. Well, that's a good derailment. I'm, I'm down. I, yeah. Wow. I, and I got sunburnt the same as you at Robbie Williams. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Why Why would you put Moby on the list? I, it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, I feel like going back to the Friends thing, maybe just because it's achievable. I mean, it's clearly achievable. Maybe because local, yeah. Maybe she'd seen him round. Yeah. Maybe she'd, she'd seen, seen him round. Yeah. Maybe she was having an affair when they made the list. I think we covered why daytime drinking hurts so much the Yeah, because day. you end up fucking Moby. <laughs> <laughs> In my anus. <laughs> Joy, joy. Okay. Um, Mark also asked, um, has there ever been a better computer game than GoldenEye? Yes. Probably. (laughs) GoldenEye was good, though. It was amazing. But I think everyone forgets, I don't know, I think it's because games have moved on so much now that it was an absolute pig to try and aim and shoot in that game. Oh, yeah. And and everyone, everyone had the no odd job rule. (laughs) <laughs> right. Yeah, sure. Surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then you could just kneel. You could just walk around kneeling and you'd be odd jobs height. If you just kneeled and then locked it in at kneeling, you could just walk around in a kneeling position and you were odd jobs height. So that was the workaround to that rule. Clearly. Yeah, but I was five when I was playing that game. <laughs> oh, jeez. So. Goldeneye is the last time I was good at a shooter. Like, the, it moved past me when Halo came out and, like, you had to jump. Yeah. And like aim more specifically. I was like, nah, I'm out. I can't do this. <laughs> but if we played Goldeneye, I would be the fucking best Goldeneye player. I just loved it with the guns that look like pencils and <laughs> and like little nail guns and shit. And yeah, we just used to run around playing Golden Gun rules and slaps only. <laughs> slaps only. Oh, nice. <laughs> I slapped karate chops. That yeah, was yeah. so good, that game. Oh, I liked the RCP90. That was my gun. It was the one that was like, you could dual wield. Wasn't that the club? It was really, really fast, but really small. You could dual wield the club too, but it was, I didn't like the club. There was too much uh, recoil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I was really into GoldenEye. I was really good I'd at like it. I'd like it if they, if they did, because everyone always goes on about like remastering and stuff. If they did it, but they did not change, like change all the graphics, everything you want, but do not change but the gameplay. The play. engine stays the same. You yeah. do not change the, the, the control system or anything <laughs> yeah. whatsoever and see how people lose their freaking mind. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. But I love the way that the game like companies and, and console companies like do that. Like as soon as as soon as people get old enough to have some disposable income, mm-hmm. they'll release like the sort of mini consoles that are preloaded with everything and chumps like me will go and buy like the, the SNES mini or whatever and Naturally. I fucking love it. Oh if they did the sixty mi- mi- N sixty four mini, fuck me. Yeah. It will come. Not even the PlayStation Mini I went out for. Yeah. But a PS2 Mini or an N64 Mini. I don't need to. I've still got the N64 with all the games, man. Yeah, I play at my parents' house all the time. That and the PlayStation 2 yeah. still work. Yeah. I've got GoldenEye, the OG one. Uh, Love it. Ocarina of Time. I play Mario Party with my nephews, who are like six and four, so I'm much better than Naturally, them. Naturally, you should be. <laughs> it's upsetting when you crush them. Absolutely smashing them. I'm like, ah, you suck it. <laughs> GoldenEye. Teach you boys a lesson right here. Oh, dear. Right, let's go on to... Uh, current Predictor League champion uh, Sam Danby, who wants three words to sum up the January transfer window. Fucking Boring shit. Boring as shit. <laughs> I mean, Sam, we've dealt with it. Just, just poor. I'm just, not. Just poor. I've, I've not dealt with it emotionally. Emotionally, you've not dealt with it. No, I'm not fucking dealt with it. If you really want my genuine feelings, feel free to go to my Twitter page and just scroll back. <laughs> at one point, and I meant it for sure, that I was very happy that I hadn't given the club any money this year and will not in the future. Fuck those guys. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's move on to Twitter then. And, Sheffield uh... United are above us in the fucking league. 
The Sheffield United were above a lot of people. But Come they on. just got promoted. That all of these teams <laughs> are fucking they fucked themselves and created this situation which ultimately has led to Liverpool winning the league. Everyone should take a good hard fucking look at themselves and seriously say with all of this money coming in that you can't buy decent players and put together a decent team in what's meant to be the best league in the world. You're all a bunch of fucking pricks. Chuck, I think that's more than three words. <laughs> huh? Oh, there was a question. Sorry. I thought this was just... Um... <laughs> a safe space. This is a safe space. Yeah, a safe space. Safe space has come back. So, yeah. so angry. Can we move that's, on? I think that's actually our oldest joke. Safe space was like the second yeah, or third the first episode. Thing we did. This is a safe space. You're fine. And it's not. <laughs> no, it's really not. It's really yeah, not. the worst place to go. It was once upon a time. Now you can't show any vulnerability never, whatsoever. There's never a safe space. I'm so fucking angry. I'll make it a safe space for you guys when England are garbage at the Euros this summer. Yeah, we don't need it. We know it. <laughs> we had our shot. We're now having expectation put back on us again. Screwed. Yeah. Absolutely screwed. Done. Adam P on Twitter. Paid Who- us! <laughs> Who is the worst good player in the Premier League? Worst good? Yeah. The player everyone thinks is good, but is actually not that good. He he always thinks of Marcelo himself. I have a pretty good answer for that. Uh, let's see. I have like a whole like set of them, actually, if you'll, if you'll sort of indulge me for a second. Is it called the Man United squad? <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> Uh, at number two, we have Kyle Walker. At number four, it's Eric Dyer wearing the jersey. Number five, John Stone. Hang on, that traditional number numbering six, system Harry of Maguire. two, four. Yeah, I don't think you've ever done a countdown, Oscar. No, no, no. These are their jersey numbers. Oh, right. At, uh, <laughs> jersey number seven, Jesse Lingard. Jersey number eight, Jordan Henderson. Oh, jersey the England squad. I see what's going on here. Yep. Nine, Harry Kane. Oh, Most a- English players, to answer this question in full sincerity, are wildly overrated. And they're not nearly as good. Like, for example, Jordan Henderson, people are talking about him as player of the season. Not jokingly. He's, like, not even really... He's nowhere near elite, like, world-class level, let alone player of the year. No, and, and, and I like, get that, because he's not a marquee... And we kind of covered this, I think. And it's, Yeah, it was when you, uh, you were off, I don't know, doing something, wanking in a corner or some shit, Oscar. Um, probably. And me and Ian held the fort admirably, if not to a lot less people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where are the listeners? Where, where did they go? Um, but yes, he is not a glamorous player. But in terms of function and also filling at the moment, being one of the people in a successful team that encapsulates the captaincy kind of role, I, I think that's probably why he is being spoken about as player of the season. That's insane. He's not that good. And that the and that's a point that holds for like so many other English players. Like there's so much value because we watch the Premier League. Yeah, I mean it's not fair to put Harry Kane in a list with Jesse Lingard. That's just not fair. Harry Kane has not been an above average striker in three years. And there's so many people who are like, Harry Kane, best striker in the world, man. All the time. Yeah, people shouldn't say he's the best striker in the world. He's not. He hasn't been. He's been a below-average Premier League striker for three years. He's been screwed with injuries in the same way like Alan sure, Shearer was, reasons. but later on. Yeah, I mean, there's reasons for it, but people still talk about him as like this elite player, when in reality he's like mediocre at best. And like the same thing is true probably of I don't know Deli Ali or Eric Dyer or I don't know. I don't, it's not fair to pick Spurs players though. Come on, look at the time they've had. <laughs> sure. They've all been fucking each other's Is... misses and punching. And... Do we even have to throw an allegedly in there, or, or is that one fine? I don't know. I'm still waiting for that bloody Amazon documentary. Yeah, exactly. We'll find out. We'll find out. Pending. Allegedly pending. Allegedly pending, potentially, depending on <laughs> if we do some sort of don't fuck with cats investigative yeah, yeah, journalism yeah, exactly, with it. Yeah. We could go that way. Yeah, we could. Um... Is it possible that the likes of Henderson just don't register on the metrics? No, he does. He does. I'm just saying he. you can measure what he does, and then what he does is in one place, and then what specifically English fans perceive okay. is in a completely different place. Like, England is not a world power. Yes, they happen to make the World Cup semi-final, and I think everyone can agree that that was a pretty fluky situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You can only you beat what's in front of you, mate. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> England are a team actually basically about where the US are, which is happy to make it out of the group stage. Can't really expect to go much farther on the big picture scale of things, given how many better teams are above them. One sec. And that I the hate... way that your face is reacting to that sentence right now do not, is in Do is not compare exactly the right. US squad to the England squad. And I, I will not hate right now, on a but lot on average. of those players. Don't talk don't talk about your shit rag team. <laughs> England are not a squad that should be expected to go anywhere farther than the first round of the knockouts. And yet everybody talks about their players like they're one of the best players in the world. It's like, no, one of the best players in the world is going to be on Spain or Belgium or Germany or, but I don't know, on Portugal the, or on Italy. On the flip like, side of it, you know, yeah, okay. England didn't deserve to go that far. But you look at a team like Belgium that you mentioned, they've, well, they were dark horses for years when they were ranked like when they were ranked like third in the world by fifa um right but they've kind of got the opposite that it shows it's not necessarily true that you can have the best players all around the world but they don't make a good team so then it's the perception of what makes them better and it's in that kind of way that i think is similar to jordan henderson being very very good as a player is that the england team become became greater than some of their parts which they did naturally and that's why they got to that point they won't now because expectation and injuries and shit but whereas belgium it is the opposite that they are less than the sum of their parts don't know where i was going with that but fuck off a usa the same as england <laughs> you are mad <laughs> you, do you don't even make it to the tournament in the first place bro that is all you heard <laughs> when is, the truth was yeah. buried in there did not qualify that england are a mid-table international squad there's one elite player on the england team and his name is raheem sterling everyone else is <laughs> meh you don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Just, but, I'm just not. But search your heart. You know this to be true. I mean, my answer probably would be like Harry Maguire, but. <laughs> but not anymore. It's not. Um, damn it. Now it's some American. <laughs> I don't. One player that I, I don't know. Everyone says and always says on the analysis that he's really good. Gabriel Jesus. I just don't feel. I don't know whether it's because. I think I agree with Aguero you Aguero is so good. But I just. Do not feel com- confident about Man City when he's there or that he is the natural successor because I watch him playing games and so often he just goes missing. Like, of course, he pops up with goals naturally because that team is just built that way. But I just don't know if it's he doesn't fit in that system. I don't know. He's kind of one. And he can't trust any striker who has such a poor penalty record as well. But they, Yeah, but they all do in that team. Like They are awful at penalties. Yeah. They have no leader and no one that can score from 12 yards. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, the penalty today, they were saying uh, Gundogan had like a 100% penalty record in his career and then Lloris saves it. Lloris isn't good. It wasn't a good penalty. Oh, there's a worse good player. Lloris. I don't think he's a good goalkeeper. Yeah, that's not a bad shout, actually. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. Uh, Well, I just looked up because I'm inclined to agree with you. I don't really like Gabriel Jesus and he doesn't pass the eye test for me. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's just the eye test. It just never really clicks. But if you look at... His numbers, his underlying numbers, oh, here we go. he is alarmingly good, apparently. Um, and I need to watch him more closely, I guess. Because for some context, Mohamed Salah puts up 0. 0.9 non-penalty XG plus expected assists per 90, so goal involvement, basically. Riyad Mahrez, 0. 0.9. Raheem Sterling, 0. 0.9. Kevin De Bruyne, 0. 0.8. Roberto Firmino, 0. 0.8. Sadio Mane, 0. 0.8. Tammy Abraham, 0. 0.8. And then Gabriel Jesus is at 1.0. So he's above all of those guys on goal involvement per 90. Just just on that, though, XG per 90 is, I feel, just in context of games, an interesting one. Because Jesus is often used as an impact sub. Yeah, true. And yes, he comes absolutely. on with like 20 minutes to go. And he will be expected to to score and change a game. Well, and he's coming into a situation where they're already attacking a lot to begin with. So yes, you're right. There should be a huge grain of salt with that number. Yeah. Because of context. Like you're exactly right. That's called, um, truth. Contextual (laughs) effects or a game state effects is is the like technical name for it. Okay. Yes. Sure. (laughs) No, within the analytics, there is a name for that. Schrodinger's goal. Game state effects. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. Oscar's getting really upset. <laughs> uh, anyway, his numbers are good, I guess. <laughs> but how many minutes has he played compared to those players? If you've got I don't know. When I filtered it out by 1,500 minutes already or more, closed he the wasn't tab. on the table. He's already closed the fucking tab, that's why. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I didn't just close the tab. When you annoyed me, I closed the entire chrome. <laughs> the laptop's closed. It's the done. whole thing is gone. So, whatever. His numbers are good. Who cares? Oh, this is how we're going to lose Oscar Chuck, honestly. <laughs> 
All right, before we lose Oscar permanently, let's call it a day there. If you want to get us on Twitter, we are Miles Offside Pod. Uh, we are Miles Offside on Facebook, and you can email us lengthy things <laughs> on <laughs> milesoffsidepod at gmail.com. And as I mentioned, patreon.com slash milesoffsidepod if you want to get involved with all our extra stuff that we do. Yeah, we would love to see your lengthy things in my anus. <laughs> oh, God. Sure. And Oscar can go pick them up because he drives through there all the time. Okay. I'm just going to turn off the podcast account on my phone, and off we go. (laughs) Fixtures! Now, we have alluded to it that this game week is the weird one, where it is extended over two weeks, and there is a break. However, Yes, it's an extender. People, (laughs) There are people playing FA Cup games in the middle, or is it the League Cup final? I don't know. We should have looked this up. But... Every single game is on TV over here, so buckaroo. Is it? Yeah, every single one. So we okay. start on Saturday, 8th of February. So Saturday deadline, no problem. Everton Palace and Brighton Watford. Uh, that's just shit. Uh, There's no 10 o'clock games that Saturday. Yes, that's why they're all on TV here, because there are no 3 o'clock. Ah, no 3 o'clock, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Sunday 9th, we have Sheffield United Bournemouth and Man City West Ham. Then we go to Valentine's Day, Friday the 14th. Don't forget, guys. Um, Or just (laughs) buy yourself some fancy candles and have a posh wank. Uh, Wolves, play Leicester. Get David Louise to sort out your Valentine's Day. Yes. (laughs) Yes, please. Uh, Straight in my anus. Straight in my anus. Lubed up. Um, (laughs) Saturday, 15th of February, Southampton, Burnley, Norwich, Liverpool. Uh, Also, much more importantly, Saturday, 15th of February, I will be making a lightsaber and seeing the Millennium Falcon for the first time with my very own eyes at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland Resort, Anaheim, California. Follow Ganaheim. I don't think that's what it's called, man. I got excited. Anaheim, California. Well, we'll be watching Southampton Burnley, mate. Yeah. No, so... Oscar, Oscar will live stream his, oh, uh, okay. his lightsaber making. He's like down Some with the kids. Some moments on... are a little too private. I was telling Ian about this. We paid for the like premium photographers at Disneyland because like that's how important of a day this is. It's like 20 bucks a day, and but who cares because I'm like, have, I want to have qu- photos the same quality as like our wedding for the first time we go to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So we're paying for like the the like you know the expensive Disney photographers you see everywhere they're like photo photo and you're like yeah, no yeah, fuck you off buy the wristband. I'm not paying you, forty dollars like a wristband thing and it's like a computer thingy and they put all of your photos on it and then at the end you can you get all of them digitally it's great yep that's right it's twenty bucks a day per person yeah it cost so like nothing it. we got that and it was fantastic because there was like seven of us we got like a family rate and it was so much better I'll be doing that instead of watching Southampton Burnley and I think I win that one so. Are you going to be with us next week then, Oscar, or are you... Uh... I will be next week, but not the week after. We leave Valentine's Day. Just pencil in a big listener dip then, fair Let's enough. Let's plan for that. <laughs> uh, washing my hair that week. Ian, you can't <laughs> use the same excuse, but... Um, no. Well, actually, you know, Oscar, you'll be on the West Coast, so the, you'll have, you won't even be in Disneyland until after like Norwich Liverpool's finished. No, and Southampton Burnley starts at 4.30 West Coast time, so I will not be getting up for that. 3.30 for my fantasy lineup. 3.30 would be fantasy hours to like check lineups. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jeez. Jesus so. Christ. Well, it's not, because that's in the middle of the game week. Then the day after, Sunday 16th, Aston Villa Spurs, Arsenal Newcastle. Then Monday the 17th, Chelsea, Man United. 15 days. 15 days until Chelsea play again, Oscar. Maybe I know. you'll have sorted your shit out by then. Well, we'll still be at Disneyland that day, so I might try to find like a sports bar in the immediate area to watch that one for a couple hours, because it'll be our third day. Like We'll have seen everything by that point. Yeah, it's going to be quite surreal. I don't know how I feel about this two-week spread, especially because like they've just had 18 games in four weeks, and now all of a sudden it's fine to just go one in three. I know, and you guys are the first game, so you're not going to see another game again for, like, forever. Uh, Yeah, our next game would be the 22nd. So, yeah, 14 days between games. Ooh, ooh, maybe we'll get some of the injuries back. Oh, maybe we'll come up with a cogent game plan. Ooh, we won't. We're going <laughs> to lose to Everton, and then we're going to lose to Newcastle. If anything, you're just going to injure more players in training. Yeah, Too five, many days of training. Five <laughs> wins since August, guys. Five. 
Um, well, that's it. Depression sets in, and uh, we're off. So, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Um, it's been a roller coaster ride in my anus. Um, thank you very much, Ian. Thanks, mate. And thanks, Oscar, for yeah. being here and contributing with many Moby stories. <laughs> yeah, for the last time, goodbye. Well, that's listener numbers done. Yeah. Uh, take care, I guess, guys. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>